Yeah, that looks like another one of the bamboo corals, parsley branch bamboo corals that we saw earlier. Mm. Back to the uh, north here. Sorry. Here. Yeah, I'll keep doing the twenties. That way, if we want to stop, all of a sudden we don't get run over. It's getting steeper. I get a sense when we turn sideways here. Boy, it almost looks like there's a little bit of a different substrate right there, but it's hard to see anything that looks loose. Uh. Does anyone have a color copy of the dye plan? We've got one. I think we've got one. No. Not in uh, color, black and white? They're all black and white because the printer was out of toner. Okay, thanks. Oh. There's an um, electronic one you can pull up. Wow. This is worse than Jenga. And there's a cliff. Yeah, I know. I think I saw the 3D view, and it's going to be a pretty sheer ridge. I'm going to try and uh, check out the there. colored copy right now. There's a little sediment in there, but I don't know that anything's loose. Uh, That looks completely welded in. 
Um, you know, Val also said, you know, eh, if you don't find one, you know, uh, I think they tried and couldn't. Maybe. Poke it, Jacob. Rock bonking. Poke, poke. Like a chicken pecking in the yard. Bonk, bonk, bonk. It's not going anywhere. Uh, right. The one to the left. Hmm. No. Mm -hmm. right. Keep your. Uh, yeah, those are well done. Keep your weapon handy there. We'll do the stop and bonk as we're moving here. Roger. I'm just going to keep it on and on halt, or you want me to turn off yeah, the blue Yeah, you can just keep it. Roger. Oh, uh. Rock bonking on the flag. You can call in another one where uh, sure. It's not gone totally red yet, still yellowish, broken yeah. up there. I keep wandering off to the west there, I don't know what. I wonder what made these sponges fall, because most of them look like they're pretty large in size, which means they had a lot of time to be able to grow before they fell over. Yeah, and also like given some of the uh, dead sponge stalks that we have been seeing in some of the other sea mounts, they haven't disintegrated also, but also they're a different kind, so Can maybe they take longer to disintegrate, but... Coming down five. I have no idea why they have toppled over. I mean, uh, once we reach a place where we see life once, maybe we can have a better idea. Yeah. With the current. That seems like the only right. reason Down five. that right. uh, beyond a certain size, probably, they cannot mm. stay in that region yes. and fall. It's, uh, I thought it would be attached, but it's not. Looks like it. Zoom in there. Yeah, it looks like it fell from a higher yeah. place. It does, doesn't it? Or no. Norway. <laughs> okay, you can go ahead. <laughs> 
I was able to get the 3D view up. Nice. I don't need, I'd rather have that screen actually. Oh, yeah. Or oh, yeah. I can I see watch it. the map and <laughs> jump for that rock. Um, I was going to say, what, what, what that point is are we? Yeah. Uh, so it's going to. No, it's going to get steepy. Can you zoom in there, please? That's what Rennie said was a terrace. So, are we past waypoint four? But we haven't hit waypoint five yet. Yeah, yeah. Was that zoom in for me, Dan? What's that? Was that zoom in for me? Yes, please. Yeah, one well, little. I'm just gonna wait for the boat <laughs> here. Zoom in on that little thing. Oh. Sorry, half track. I didn't even see that. Well, they want to go downhill. That kind of looks like a Hopefully stop after from a Kaiser to it <laughs> because of the color. I, uh, and that's the hydro. It's a bunch of hydroids growing. The deep it. canyon Good at the for top. another uh, 20. Oh. Okay, can go in. Thanks. Want me to come up or no? Yeah, you better come up. And we have a question in the chat asking um, how you can tell whether a rock is welded in or possibly loose, any visual cues. And I know um, we're busy looking for a rock sample, but if either Hans or Dan or whoever would like to chime in, if you'd really, like to share. It's really technical. We poke it. <laughs> 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 the poke test. Yeah. Very scientific. <laughs> From my short experience on this cruise, it just, it looks like there's a layer of crust that's kind of thrown over all these rocks and kind of holding them down. Mm. And Manganese crust. Yep, manganese crust. And, and when there are areas of sediment or, or rocks scatter. There's some contenders. Yeah. Yeah, that's a promising spot. Then there's better chance that it might be loose. Mm. Thanks uh, for sharing that. Depends on how long it takes Jacob to pick up this grapefruit here. Yeah, I think this is a good looking spot. Right but there in front of the porch. Oh, I pressed a blue button. I didn't mean to. Yeah, do that. you can uh, hold position, please. All right, we'll go ahead and pause the chat while we uh, try to sample. I thought I pressed hold. Oops. Freeze fail. Uh, where are you? You're up in the, up in the bumper again. Oh, you're doing the flutist, the Robert Waters style. Yeah, I was, was wondering. I can fix what that was if wrong. it's uncomfortable. Yeah, it's fine. I went right up against the porch, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, in unison. <laughs> we, <laughs> we found a loose one. Oh, we did. <laughs> you can tell I never played. I wasted all my money at the Joy game. It's okay. roundish. Not so angular. Yeah, I was saying, I don't know. Do any of these look angular? 
Some of them. The one, that this one, one might be more so, but it might no, be too far. And the one that's... It's definitely too far. Yeah. Yeah. We can oh. always move. It looks yeah, more. that one doesn't want to move. Uh, you can get it. You're not coming down far enough. It's down in a hole right there. It's like half a meter below the vehicle. There you go. Yeah. I hope it has an angular side. It's looking roundish. I hope so, too. Mm. Define angle. <laughs> I think the back side is. Well. That looks pretty round to me. Yeah. Yeah. What about the one just to the left of it? It kind of looks like the bad guy from Nightmare Before Christmas with the skull. <laughs> so, are you talking about that? No, the one above it, like just left, is now, no. Okay, if you respectfully set that one back down That there. one, yeah, that I one. I can make a cairn too, but we usually oh, put them back where they were. Yeah, I'm going to put it back where it was. Uh, Ooga Booga, is that the name? No, the, <laughs> the, the mad scientist. Oh, yes, I see that too. Mahalo kanono. Sorry. Okay, I'll see if I can come around here. Kind of in a hole here. A loose rock is a good sign. Yeah. Oh, there's an eel or something. I think these are all oh, loose yeah. in here, so we can take our time and get one you really like. What do you think about this one, Taylor Ann? Yeah, that looks like it's an apple blanket. I'm oh, trying to look at the lasers and look at that, or see what size it is. Or that. But I don't look too happy. We just started bulldozing his front yard. Yeah. Or sister. I think that might have potential. Yeah. Uh, right which size. one? That Left one. Left or right? I'll right. put the lasers on it. Can't quite get the lasers. Just to the right of the lasers. Well, I guess very confident. Didn't even poke it first. I think that's one I thought looked like Finkelstein. <laughs> Y'all happy with that one? Got a pretty sharp edge. It looks pretty round too, though. So up to you guys. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty round. Yeah, it's as pretty well. round. I think I all of these are. Um, yeah, that looks pretty round to me. Too round. All right. Sorry, kind of long. Yeah, sorry right. you're being picky. Uh, where is this one? Down right there. Or? Yeah, up a little I bit. So. I think it was right there, y'all. Yeah. Well, we found loose rocks, but they're all yeah. too round. That's right. It was a good Is spot. Is a round rock better than no rock? I'm not waking her up. Hannah was doing a puzzle. Yeah. On. Okay, I gotta, I gotta make a move here. Yeah. yeah. All right. We gotta bounce. We gotta bounce. No, I mean, get out from underneath that lantern here. You gotta make a 180. Yeah, I'm gonna turn and burn. We found one loose patch. We'll find another loose patch. Yeah. No lie, I kind of like the Robert Waters action. No, you're ruined for life. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it is adjustable just for that reason, right? So it's dealer's choice, whatever you feel more comfortable with is whatever works for you, right? Yeah. But it feels like it's almost like his wrist is in a cast. Yeah. What do you think? 
too round, too angular, too flat. That looks too big. Um, these are looking round. No response from the lounge, Mia? Uh, I think Hannah there. wants to sleep already. Yeah. Is that too big? That's looking big. That's round. That's round. She wants a sharp relief edge, like they're, a broken. They're huh? angular, wedge-shaped is our instruction. Right. Yeah. Got so many crazy yeah. instructions from geologists. <laughs> One was like a, <laughs> was it a, a potato, but not a, a well-cooked potato, but not like a nuclear potato. Nuclear? Okay, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for the geologists that they can't put in. <laughs> They're not here to defend themselves? Yeah, and not here to defend themselves. <laughs> in court, also legally? Very difficult to probably express trash, in. Trash talking we, geologists. We, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to us, it's just wrong. We, we probably should have just had them draw a lot of different examples of good ones and bad ones. Yeah. Which I, do have, I do have some pictures back here in my binder. But I also like the last <laughs> page of that instruction. Yeah, didn't it say... It? A rock, but that wasn't Val's instructions. It that was no. another geologist, but saying that any rock was a good rock if you couldn't find the right kind. But yeah, not sure if that's the case here. You would think they like bring a sample. This is a good rock. This is not a good rock. This is a nuclear potato. <laughs> <laughs> nuclear potato. Still looking for the nuclear potato. <laughs> Okay, I think we're good for that 20 now. It looks like 285 is still... Yeah, well... Yeah. Yeah. I'm looking at Jacob's uh, sonar there, yeah, and he's pointing right towards like a prominent you know, see what, see how it kind of comes out there. That would be a good one to hit because they're uh, well off the shelf there, maybe somewhere else. Well, the animals like the kind of I don't know what the word is, the prow or whatever, sticky Conjugate. out, sticky outy bit. Mm. Yes, ma'am. Were you circling a rock there? Yeah, I thought we had a, an opportunity, but no, no, that's that one's too big. Yeah, yeah that's that one are, looks welded in. Well encrusted, you can call it in. I'm far enough out here. These are looking more angular, but they're looking tight. That. Uh, no, pull in there. I am pulling yeah. in there. I'll try here. Ooh. What is okay. that? Maybe that. Yeah, you can poke around in there. Huh? Look at that. Hopefully that's not too large. Which one again? I'm sorry. Well, this one. <laughs> Definitely not that one. <laughs> mm, that one's loose. I'm not sure which one on set is. Why don't I move the camera? I think oh, over. That one's kind of loose. That one's big. Is that too big? Yeah, the one I just moved is too big for sure. What it's about gone. that one? This one? That one you moved is definitely not too big. Did this one move? No, but the 
The one behind it did. Dinner plate behind it did. Oh. You want that one? That I looks huge. Poke some of the other ones there. Oh no, that one. This one moved. Oh, oh. oh maybe not. Can you reach this one? This one? Yeah. Maybe. Oh. Pretty far. <laughs> Too far. <laughs> Was that the machine making that noise or? <laughs> yeah. I like that. Poke that one again. <laughs> that you immediately dismissed this too big. The one below the sponge there. The one that actually moved. Alright. Uh, let me hold real quick. Yeah, if you saw one that moved here and it's not too big, I, I yeah, think we should... Pick that one up and have a look at it. Yeah, can we get the lasers on top of it? Or as soon as we can wait until yeah. we pick it up also. Yeah, it's long. Oh. But it's not that round. And from the perspective of, you know, any rock is a good rock if you can't find one. Yeah, that looks like it has a nice square edge to it. Yeah. Oh. <gasps> so sorry. The question is, will it so fit? Sorry, That's big. So sorry, so sorry, so sorry about this. Yeah. It, it would down. in our forward box, probably. But that's also harder to reach to, I think. Uh, it'll fit in the starboard box, no problem. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. It, basically, if you can pick it up, it'll fit in the box. Yeah, I mean, I think we should should do it rather than not. Since yeah, I think that looks like a good candidate for collection since it's been a while since we've touched bottom. Yeah. Take your time and uh, get a good grab on it because it's a little heavy, so you don't want to drop it while you're coming around and I have to go chase it. Uh, you got a good grab on it there? You can roll a little bit and see if it's going to fall out that or you... Yeah, that's a good grab. If All you right. hold it like that, it'll drop into the box. All right. I'll get the uh, sample salvo going here. I might have to uh, lift up a bit for you as you're coming Yes, around. please. Coming up. Any box is a good box, so nothing's been collected. So wherever you can reach is good. Let me come up so you can swing around. Okay, should have room now. Did you say this is? So this is going to be a sample 113 um, because we had. Bingo, bingo. Oh, oh nice. nice. And that was box E? Yes, sir. So sample 113, starboard E? Yes. And the depth is 2289. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the ballast. We were up in the 40s there. So, yeah. <laughs> Taylor, didn't you say that Dan had to carry in the next heavy rock? <laughs> I did. Good reminder. <laughs> that, one looks, that one looks all right. We'll see. If I can't get it, I might come find you. <laughs> I'm not going to make the old man carry the rock. You guys, all y'all are probably in way better shape than I am. I'll probably make Jake carry it because he uh, collected yeah, it. Yeah, Jake, yeah, you did collect that one, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alrighty, let me know when you're situated. Right there. Of course, 
No, there's going to be like tons of angular small rocks. After That's spending 45 minutes trying to find <laughs> them. Don't look at them. Don't look at them. Just, just how it goes. It's a heavy rock here. I can feel it. Okay, yeah. we're good. You talking to me? Yes. 2285? Sure. Let's go for 40. Yeah, we want that steep bit. Just confirming with ROV because I have a hard time reading the letters on the boxes now. That was E, right? What's that? The the box was starboard E. Uh, Just triple checking. Whatever. It's yes, it was E. Forward. Okay, thank you. Is the forward most one. Yeah, okay, I yes, can't that is E. Out the rhyme or reason of a, or awesome. Thank you. E as in yeah. Alabama. Why does it start with E? It's because A B C A C, B C D E F. Yeah. So A is the little one. Every time I work it out, someone comes up with a better A, B, C, D plan. Maybe E <laughs> is the largest for their elephant? I don't know. That's what I just said. Oh, you said that? Yeah. Oh. Well, that's good. I'm glad we did that. I mean, we are happy that we got a sample. It wasn't easy, but we all do remember, of course, this is a special area, so it is a special sample. We're in Papahanao Makuakea Marine National Monument. And it's an area sacred to Hawaiians. And so uh, it does mean a lot culturally to remove anything. And we're grateful to do that. Very grateful. I feel that way about every single sample we've ever taken of an ROV. Yeah. It's a pretty awesome. Uh, opportunity and continues to amaze me that we can take samples at 2200 meters yeah I'm always grateful that we're able to do what we're supposed to do But especially in the uh, in the marine sanctuaries, so we have one cool aspect about working on Nautilus: we do a lot of work in in the marine sanctuaries, not only here in Hawaii but all up and down the West Coast. Mm -hmm. There's I don't know at least half a dozen there, all the way up into uh, Canada and uh, some of their protected green environments. Um, and we have a question in the chat if we have a moment for uh, Jake. Could you share what um, that process looks on, like, like on your end with the um, collection? Like, I know it has kind of a special controls. If you're too busy, no, no worries about answering right now. Oh no, yeah. Um, so imagine like a big arm with a shoulder, elbow, wrist, and you kind of just have to play around with it to kind of see how it works and how it. There's a bunch of different joints, so um, yeah, you kind of just have to kind of get a feel for what's what's going on there. So Do you I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, there's just a shoulder <laughs> and elbow. <laughs> it's like uh. just an arm. Like a replica of the Hercules arm, kind of. Yeah, yeah, I guess yeah. It's like it looks exactly like the manipulator right there on Hercules. So kinematic manipulating is the, word the you're movement. For. What is the what is the word I'm looking for? Kinematic. Kinematic. Replica. I want to know why I'm answering. You're the you're the <laughs> guy who's been working with these systems for so long. Do you care to shine some light? And the tool Jacob was using is a spatially correspondent six degree of freedom, seven function 
bilateral manipulator system. The master or the topside controller uh, is a kinematic replica of the bottom side manipulator. So it has all the same uh, degrees of freedom as my shoulder, elbow, wrist pitch, wrist jaw, wrist rotate, and the uh, seventh function is the gripper function. And there's a an array of buttons on the thing. Um, one of the ones that's most uh, commonly used is the index button. So the uh, the top side can the top side arm doesn't have to be uh, in uh, sync with the bottom side arm, so it can be in any wonky position that you want or non-wonky position. So he's um, on and off that button quite a bit to make the the top side arm comfortable in his hand, no matter what the position of the bottom one is. Can I cut in for a second? Sure. I want to zoom in there on the first black coral of the... Matt Matisse. Yes. And as Hans rightly I did, that looks like a Matt Matty's black coral. That's what Jake meant to say about the manipulator. <laughs> That's what I was going to say about the manipulator. <laughs> I just forgot. Yeah. I had no idea. I thought it was a joystick or something, but I peered over. It is a kind of a okay. A mini can arm. Are you happy arm? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you yeah. happy? Yes, Science with that? yes, yes okay, absolutely. Can go away. Thank you. Yep, good for another 40, please. Yeah, you always hear Dan tell me, elbow down, elbow down. Yeah, <laughs> I'm walking, I'm like this all the time. <laughs> I try it. Moving the shoulder. I try not to say that because... Um, so the way we're meant to operate the manipulator is you basically ma maneuver the controller. You just move the jaw where you want it in 3D space, basically. So it's really annoying to have people tell you to move your elbow. Like if you go to reach out to pick up your coffee cup, yeah, you don't think about, okay, I need to move my elbow. Now I need to lift my shoulder. Now I need to rotate my wrist. Now I need to close my fingers. You just reach out and grab it. Right? Yeah. So our manipulator is is meant to operate the same way. Very cool. Thank you so much for sharing that. Definitely gives a better picture of, you know, how do we make these fine movement movements work. Wait a minute, when you pick up your coffee cup, you don't start with your shoulder? <laughs> but a lot of what Jacob is trying to do there is you try to scratch your armpit with your, scratch your <laughs> right armpit with your right arm, then you'll see how he's all wonky there. <laughs> <laughs> Usually if you want to scratch your right armpit, use your left arm, right? I'm testing it now. We I don't, feel like we don't, we it's don't, okay. Uh, <laughs> I saw it from actually. Oh my god, that works a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> we don't use the left arm a lot. It's uh So Herc does have a left arm. It does, yeah, there's two manipulators, two seven function manipulators. The left one is uh rate controlled. So it just has uh, solenoid valves in it that turn on and off, kind of like your uh, sprinklers for your lawn irrigation. Right, you want to come up with it, Nate? Uh, the right-hand one has uh, several valves in there that were uh, that are like an airplane or a missile flight control surface, so they respond very rapidly. And they all move at the same time, where the one on the on the port side is more like a backhoe or a crane, where you're only using one or two functions at a time. No, I didn't know that's kind of like if your right hand is your dominant hand and then can do more things, I guess. It's very cool. The one on the left side is um, uh, the 
magnum is uh, a lot. Uh, it's a lot stronger. It can take uh, the full weight of Hercules, so we use it uh, when we're, you know, grabbing on to hold on to something. Mm. Uh, we also use it to, yeah, carry heavy stuff around. And, uh, when we're deploying big scientific instruments, it's used to uh, pin them onto the onto the porch or to lift them off or to lift them up and move them around, which we're not doing a lot yeah. of that on, on this expedition, but we do put things on there that are, you know, it takes two or three of us to get it onto the vehicle. Wow. Or it could hold the, the ROV in place while the right arm did something mid-water, perhaps. Correct, yeah. If we're working on a scientific instrument, we we grab a hold of that often. There's uh, places on the instruments that are specifically for the ROV to, to grab a hold while it does some intervention with the other manipulator. So that holds the ROV in position so it's not, um, you know, so it can work on the instrument. Mm -hmm. Usually deploying or recovering. They're two different brands of manipulators, right? Uh, they are indeed, yeah. The one on the right side is made by Kraft Robotics in, uh, I should know where they are, Kansas? You, if you're listening, I don't scold me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we ship stuff to uh, Kraft and they ship us uh, care packages and goodies quite often. My boss does that, so I don't know the address. That's my excuse. Uh, they take really good care of us, a great technical support, and um, they're often tuned in uh, watching us, so we have a really good long relationship with them, which makes a huge difference when we're you know, trying to figure out something, or um, carrying out upgrades or maintenance. Uh, that's made by uh, a company called International Submarine Engineering. They make um, they made the hydraulic thrusters on Hercules and uh, the valve packs that control uh, the left manipulator and uh, the thrusters and the various things that wiggle, like the uh, camera and the sample boxes. And they are in uh, Vancouver, Canada. They've been around for a long time. Also a great outfit. They are uh, uh, known for doing, they do a lot of custom um, systems. They're big into, uh, they're into AVs right now, all the rage. We made some really cool AUVs. Nice. But they also built the vehicle that uh, the Ventana that the Monterey Bay Research Aquarium Institute has. Uh, they built the Ropos vehicle, which is a Canadian, one of the kind of premi premier Canadian uh, scientific vehicle. Both of those uh, machines, like Hercules, have over 2,000 dives on them. Wow. So I think I heard that one of the, the limiting factors, well, the, the depth capacity for Hercules... I'll go for another 20, yeah. One of the factors is the syntactic foam. And that...
that it was the type of foam that could uh, could go to greater depths or not, but it was much heavier to get different type of syntactic foam for buoyancy. Correct. Yeah. To go to a deeper depth. Foam. Yeah, it has to do with the density of the of the foam, the ratio of uh, glass spheres and epoxy, marine epoxy that they're made with. Oh, okay. So the obviously the deeper the uh, the denser the foam has to be, thus heavier and bigger. And just jumping in here real quick, if there's any teachers watching, we do have a lot of resources for learning about ROVs on our website, including different in there. design challenges, um, lesson plans for graphing ocean motion, um, sensors, mapping simulations, photo mosaics for better understanding how they use um, photos for maritime history and archaeology. So definitely check that out if you want to learn more about the ROVs and all the technology aboard the Nautilus. Yep, and we are looking at an Iridogorgia or one of the Rotan Iridogorgia. I would think it's an Iridogorgia. Thank you. My pleasure. I'm waiting for the boat there. so. Okay, you can go away, thanks. And thank you viewers for all your comments um, while we were sampling the rocks. Uh, we have one person sharing that they've been loving to ID the animals along with us. So thank you, Upashana, for also shouting out all those IDs and helping us learn together. Um, and thank you again to our viewer for joining us. We're so glad to be here exploring with you. And then we had a, a bio question. Um, how much oxygen do corals and sponges need to survive and what produces the oxygen at great depths? Uh, do you want to um, share a little bit about that? Yeah, I'm not exactly sure about how much. Um, sure. I can look that up, but uh, they get the oxygen that they need for respiration from the ambient water, and the water, the whole water column has dissolved we, we oxygen in it, yeah. which comes from the surface currents and air interactions, and how the sea, and how the ocean currents move, how the deep water uh, currents are formed. So there's a complex system, but there is uh, oxygen dissolved in the ocean water across the depth, and these organisms are able to. Uh, use that for respiration. Right, yeah. There's a whole science, I believe, to stratification, mm -hmm. like the formation of layers in layers, the water yeah. and how much it mixes. So um, a lot of that will affect how much oxygen gets down from the surface waters or, you know, nutrients from deep waters to shallow water. So um, definitely a lot of ocean currents um, can affect uh, different water quality parameters and then in turn affect the creatures. Yes, yeah. absolutely. We were definitely looking at sponges and anemones and some fish on the deep ocean wrecks at 5,400 oh, meters. Sea star! <laughs> First sea star! Ooh. First sea star of the night! And the ship also got excited. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Oriel. It's a little bumpy. <laughs> so we're going to zoom in on the sea star. This is an interesting one. <laughs> They're all interesting. They're all interesting. <laughs> Every single one we is love different. them all. Has a bit of yellowing in the middle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then becomes more pinkish. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this one's not gorging itself on corals. It's <laughs> a little slimmer. Yeah. This one also looks like it could be a tree topper. I think yeah, you said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the the um, what are the what's the two feet? Two feet. Yeah, they're very. Yeah, we can prominently see the two feet for of this uh, sea star and s responding to the water current and moving the two feet around. Yeah. Do you have more zoom there? It looks like a solasterid sea star. Thank you. 
I know our phones listen to us because I've been getting um, social media yeah. ads about a stuffed animal Kathy. starfish all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> Makes you I'm like, my yeah. phone has been listening. <laughs> and I really want it. Dang it, Mia. <laughs> Okay. Thank you for looking at the sea star. Okay, I can go ahead and take this. That can be the, either this or Lasterid or the Wicks Asterid family. Yeah, I think it looks more like the Wicks Asterid. Uh, yeah, it had six arms also. So, Wicks Asterid sea star. Yeah, we haven't seen much here, so it's mm -hmm. kind of one of the bigger organisms. Mm -hmm. Yes, we've just been seeing uh, mostly uh, the bamboo corals, uh, the sparsely branched bamboo corals, uh, a couple of webs towards the start of the shift, and that one pleurogorgia. And some tiny the cup corals. Tiny cup corals and a couple of uh, batibatis, the black corals. I've learned so much from you. <laughs> and a sea cucumber. Thank you. And a sea and cucumber. Oh, yeah, right. the purple that I, I think I called it a sponge. Yeah. Uh, by mistake. Obviously. And um, several uh, dead Sponge. sponges. In that eel looking thing. So now for rank it, yeah. yeah. Yep. <laughs> yes, we keep seeing these uh, bamboo corals, probably in the genus Keratoisis. I think we're just going to start to get steeper and steeper from this point forward. Yeah, it's looking that way. That's why we've been sneaking up on it. Did you want to share any more about the terrain, Mia, or the mapping? Because I know we were kind of going into some waves, and I was hearing there was, like, bubbles, right? So was that affecting our map um, resolution or anything like that? Oh, oh. Um, let me talk about that in a bit. Sure, I need yeah. to No problem. Uh, one second. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I'll, I'll hold for a while. So, yeah, you're good. So I can come up and kind of... Yeah, we'll come up till we can see past it. I think that looks like a pronoid. Um the paracalyptrophora, and in that case it would be the, if it's a primnoid, or can we... You want to push in I there? I think it might be a chrysogorgid. Chrysogorgid? Yeah. The rem... Remulogorgid. Yeah. You want to see the other one? Yeah. This one. That's the pleurogorgid. Yeah, so this, the one on the right is a bamboo coral for sure. The mm. one on the left, uh, there's a bit of confusion because both of these colonies can look similar. But yeah, they're like very fine polyp, chrysogorgia-like polyp. Chrysogorgia-like polyp, so it can be the other genus. Yes, thank you so much. Okay, you can go ahead, thanks. Oh, you're on three, never mind. What's that? I was going to change the... Yeah, it's going to... Sorry, what was the question, Kara? Oh, no worries. Um, just uh, wondering if you had any thoughts about this terrain or the mapping process, because I know it was kind of bumpy recently. So if the bubbles affected anything as you guys were mapping? Uh, yeah, so and I know there's some actual, there's some interesting organisms here. So feel free to jump in. Uh, there was something spiky in the back, Upashana, or oh. an, anyone. Yeah, yeah, that, sorry, I was writing things. Uh, I think we passed a... Uh, uh, 
Chrysogorgia, probably that was a Metallogorgia. There's a Crinoid uh, on the rock and uh, Batibathes and one of the Sinolactid sea cucumbers. Oh, yeah, yep. purple one. There we yep. go. I love those. Yeah. Mm, so pretty. That's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, Remuligorgia. So, yeah, so when we were transiting here, we had a lot of problems collecting data because it was really rough seas and um, so one of the things that can happen is that too many bubbles can get under the um, instruments that we use and it prevents us from getting good data so um, we didn't collect as much as we were hoping but also that meant I got a break for the first time so you know, silver linings. <laughs> that was nice, yeah. And this, had this area been mapped previously? Because there was other dives here before? I believe so. I think the Okeanos might have mapped it. Um, we definitely have data here, so I don't think we would have... There's been dives here. I, we, I don't think we would have dove here if we didn't have it. Um, and uh, an hour ago or so, I had pulled up that 3D image like I did the one day when we were descending down the blue water. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, just on the bottom screen here. And was showing the front row and whoever could see. Um, I could turn it on again, but it also will turn off my ZP screen, so. They were all peeking, I see them. Oh, yeah. they were all peeking? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we saw. Okay, you saw it, you saw it. So for the viewers at home, <laughs> It was just a 3D view of our dive plan, and we are getting close, you know, in the 2D view, we have um, our high pack survey, which is what we use for navigating, uh, and the contour lines are getting closer together, and that means that it's going to be steeper because it takes less time. You imagine We're if you're- down at that tether for me. I thought I saw something wonky there. Uh, look down a little more, please. Okay. So if you imagine uh, if you're walking or, uh, across an area and the contour lines are wider, if they're 10 meter contour lines, it takes the distance is longer than if the contour lines are closer together, um, so which means it's steeper. So we're getting into an area. Basically, it's going to be, I think, like a rock wall. And then at the top, it kind of evens out. And then there's a bit of a dip that um, I don't know which watch will have that, but I think it'll be interesting. So yeah. So right now we just are going slowly. Jake's coming up with Atalanta. Very cool. Thanks so much for that um, helpful explanation and um, overview of like our terrain and map. Yeah, sorry it's a bit disjointed. I'm looking at many screens and I'm always looking to make sure Jake's screen of danger zone isn't there and then I'm looking at the thrusters on the ship and at the other screen over here with Atalanta and so yeah. Yeah, no, I'm I'm always amazed <laughs> at your multitasking abilities. Yeah. Yeah, and according to our notes that would be the Aspidoscopula sponge. The ferrade sponge. At least, I think this is the first live one that we saw. Zoom in there. There's something Push in, in there, the please. water column of fish swimming. Oh. They kind of remind me of the rib cages. Yeah, yeah. looks like a skeleton rib cage. Yeah. With another the spine coming out too. Yeah, another the thing cage. for the spooky October. <laughs> yeah, this yeah. can be. I'm gonna add this to our design of the dead man's watch shirt. Yeah, <laughs> this oh actually is a good one. Gosh, yes. <laughs> okay, you can go in, thanks. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's the first living one we've seen. Mm -hmm.
And what kind of sponge was that? Uh, Aspidoscopula. It is a ferried sponge. Thank you. I'm. I think in the notes for our highlights, I'm just going to put mm. sponge that looks like <laughs> spine and. Kara, you can use this. Ribcage. <laughs> okay, here we go. Thank you. The lower one. <laughs> oh, there's a shrimp or something. Yeah. In there. Yeah, and I often call them like fairied sponges because it's easier to spell it that way. Okay. It's in the DSC yes, there. Yes, that's for you. true. <coughs> oh, and the DSC view is beautiful. Oh, uh, you can zoom oh, in on the what we're just getting a shot there. And when you put the lights up, this, there's like all these speckles on the rocks too. Yeah. They look like shrimp chips. The shrimp is just chilling out in the. You <laughs> <laughs> die. I'm gonna scoop some pocky with them. Oh, uh, <laughs> we haven't talked about it. shrimp chips yet. <laughs> <laughs> shrimp on a shrimp chip. Yeah. <laughs> that is just sounds so suggesting, but okay. I just think it's so funny looking at the Atalanta camp and you see this big <laughs> Hercules just okay. bobbing constantly. Uh, Small sponge. <laughs> <laughs> it's like towering over the sponge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That is a good view. David and Goliath. Yeah, Jacob, you're right. Poke and shrimp chips, that's hard to beat. Hard to beat. I'm gonna... Er, and zoom along the back side and uh, we dropped off a little uh, hill here. So. You like me face uh, more west? Uh, I'm not sure what we're going to do here. And that's the back side of what we just came over right here. Not sure how far it drops down here. Uh, in any case, good for uh, let's do four zero uh, three one five. Yeah, I'll put Atlanta out in the deep water there. fortunate to have Oreo up there. He's oh, one of the better mates on the boat. Fun sponge. It's been, it's been driving this Nautilus for a while now. Love Oreo. It's and I think it guy. was just on our last watch that we learned the updated ID for the sponge. If this is the same one, then it would be the, we need to see the front part, but looks like the Euplectelid Advena Magnifica, which briefly translates into a uh, magnificent alien. Wow, I love that. <laughs> alien, really? uh, I can zoom in on the back side. We're moving the ship to uh, put it out in the deep water there, so we don't have enough leash to come around the front side just now, but we will. In yeah. Theory. So that is the Euplectelid uh, at Vena Magnifica, the magnificent alien. Visiting alien. They have also mentioned that. Visiting. Mm -hmm. Visiting alien. Cool. Magnificent visiting alien. This like it's not part of the name, but getting uh, back to that other story we were discussing <laughs> yes. before the watch. I see. Are they a resident? I yeah, Jane yeah, is going to get support for her theory. And there was a little pink spot in there, so I bet there's some there's small somebody. shrimp or something, and there was a bamboo coral. Yep. So to Taylor Ann, I mean, relatively speaking, we're seeing more abundance here now, well, yeah. or diversity anyway yeah. and we haven't taken a niskin but i don't know if this is enough to um yeah i wouldn't say no. it's enough for a niskin quite yet yeah but gotcha. yeah definitely are seeing um more diversity with a couple of uh i saw a metallogorgia chrysogorgia plur 
what is the other one? The the, the new uh, yeah. Ramil Ramili Gorgia. Ramil Gorgia. Um, and yeah, Ramulo, sorry, Ramuli Gorgia. We've been seeing some other sponge there. species. Okay. Yeah. Finally saw a first living frayed sponge. The, uh, so yeah, definitely up. seeing more signs of life possible now. as we travel Teens. higher up. And I hope to see more yes, when we, as we move up, because that's what we have been generally seeing. There's yeah, I think uh, yeah, in the seamount previously the, the, has been explored and they have seen quite a bit of biodiversity. We're just trying to uh, get an idea of how deep right. that, that biodiversity extends to. Ah. Is this a corallid? <laughs> I have to bring out my Which one? page long <laughs> notes right now and go through it. Okay. Well, just, uh, From here, let me. It looks like see. a heavy crowling. Okay, okay, let us see. But I can't tell. If from it this far. is a heavy, heavy corallium, then. Okay. Once we zoom in, we'll know. Oh, look, there's another one hiding under there. Yeah. Couple under there. Smaller recruits. Looks heavy corally. Um, okay. Wait, is a bifurcation. Zoom and polyps would be on one, mostly on one side of the branches. And yes, yes, I would say this is a hemicorallium. Can we have a closer look at the base of the? Uh, uh, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, that that's good enough. I think hemicorallium, given our notes that we have gathered. Retracted. Okay. Yeah, I would say I would agree with you. Yeah, and we don't see any retracted polyps. Everything's extended, so we can't check that point. Most of the polyps on one side, bifurcating uh, branches, looks brittle. Yes. Thank you. And it has a nice ophiroid on it as well. And what are those tiny things? I ask every time. Where? They were like swimming around. Mycid. Mycid. Mycid shrimps. Yeah, so this looks like, uh, yes, it's a heavy corallium. See where the uh, polyps are uh, closed, but they're not retracted. Mm. Yeah. So that's heavy corallium feature. I, just by looking at it, I, to me, it looks like a heavy corallium, but I can't explain it. It just looks more fragile. Yeah, and but like I'm like trying to put uh, reasons behind yeah. how, why something looks like something, because I honestly confused between paragorgia and hemicorallium all the time thank you so much okay because they Go look ahead. so similar i need like some um, traits to check and confirm yeah i think that's the wise way to go and mm -hmm. also my problem is that i always second guess uh, do you think that's a, another fossilized whale beak there is a black coral that i can see but Where i do you see it? This one? This one oh looks yeah. like a black coral, yeah, and yeah. this one, there's something, yeah. The second circle. The small, the darker thing on the sea floor. Well, um, might have enough to get around this rock now, let's see. Yeah, And for the sake of the geologist not here, would this be pillow lava? Uh, I don't think so. No, but I'm not yeah. a geologist. I think I don't, I don't I'm not think even so. sure if it would be low bait or not. Um, I've been seeing a lot of botryoidal textured rock, though. Some of them, um, we've transitioned from some smooth rock to botryoidal. Um, I'm not too sure what this is and how it got this way. Just a boulder. Yeah. Oh, another living frayed. Yeah. yeah. Let me come down a little bit. Uh, yeah, you can come Give down me a leaf. few. Um, I think we're good for another 20 on that bearing 315. 315. Just please. Another glass sponge, another heavy corallium. 
And it's the uh, same one, only looking oh, the other on way. Oh, the other side, okay. Yeah. At least I ID did it correctly. There was the something <laughs> here you wanted to see. Yes, yes. Uh, the the sponge. Okay, it's, so this is the batty patties. I think it was somewhere here. Was it that? I can't see if this oh, one, this left, one. Yeah. yeah, the thing I said might be a whale yeah. beak or something. Sponge stock. I think it's a... American soap. Ba uh, sponge. Just a dead sponge. Yeah. But that's a nice view. Could that. be a sponge fossil. Oh, yeah. Could be. Hmm. <laughs> Can't tell if it's covered or not, or if it's just brown. We can zoom in on the possible sponge fossil. <laughs> Sponge fossil. It's Rick and Morty. Mm. What is it? Oh so it could be a million year old sponge fossil. Though, yeah. Right? It does look encrusted, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. That's interesting. Okay. Thank you. What's the uh, rate of manganese encrust per million years? Point zero zero one, point it was zero like something. A, a few millimeters yeah. per million years, I think. Oh, wow. It's a crazy number. Yeah. Okay, we wanted to see the front side of this. Yes. Uh, Visiting alien. Mm-hmm. And we have a couple of uh, bamboo coral securitizers. And just doing a quick search, they have found sponge fossils, including a glass sponge fossil. Um, this one estimated to be on the seabed from 80 million years ago. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. 80 million. That's wow. pretty amazing that we can still see these sponges. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I know. I think last year on one there. of our expeditions, we <laughs> saw a couple of those as well. And I think they were also freighted sponges. Freighted oh. sponges? Mm -hmm. So maybe there's got something to do with the structure that the don't disintegrate that easily. Yeah. Because if it's one of those uh, euplectalid or rosalids, we, we we always see the stalks. We don't get to see the head after it topples over or dies. So something right. with the ferrate that they don't disintegrate that easily. Yeah. That's that's a mm. beautiful zoom into the euplectalid glass sponge. Thank okay. you. Back and we can also bit, see the, the not called spicules. What are they called in sponges? The yeah, I think they're spicules, the glass spicules. Glass spicules. Yeah. Right. Okay, I can go away. And there's also things like micro fossils, like they look for like pollen grains, yes. like teeny tiny BSC stuff in, in, in sediment. So Maybe. there's probably fossils we don't even see. Yeah. There's something there, yeah, right? Which way do I gotta turn to? You gotta turn. Oh, turn. I was just, you gotta no, it's just turn a rock. I'm seeing things. There. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be, a, it probably is a rock just. Uh, you wanna come up for me? I'm right on you. And another article published in Nature, which is considered a very reputable science oh. journal, um, another geologist kidding, the estimated another uh, sponge fossil at 890 million years Ooh, old, which is like, that is crazy. My brain can't even yeah. conceptualize <laughs> that. <laughs> that amount of time, yeah. It's <laughs> a lot of time. Um, and then we had another question about deep sea coral guides. So I believe Upashana and Taylor Ann are using the NOAA Ocean Exploration Benthic Deep Water Animal Ident Identification Guide. Yes. It does need some updates, but if you want to check out uh, the photos there, they can be helpful for IDing things. And then they also had a question if you had a recommendation on a good textbook. Um, and they just wanted to shout out your amazing, vast knowledge of deep sea animals and um, thanks for, for helping them learn. So, any recommendations, um, either of you, on a textbook? Uh, textbook on what? Uh, I mean, I would say for invertebrates, uh, in 
generally good textbooks. Uh, what is that? The one that we are currently using. Um, I'll tell you the name. Sorry, I'm just horrible with names. Um, see, do you want another movement or are you climbing up? Uh, let me get up ahead like here. The see how it looks. There's any particular deep sea textbook for animals? It's more like invertebrates or vertebrates. Um, and also for what level the textbook, that's also. Brusca and Brusca. Brusca and Brusca is always a good book for. Uh, is that the authors? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think the new editions are. Oh, this is uh, stocked right out again. Those are very good. Uh, any of the editions are very good. Uh, invertebrate zoology books mm. that goes over each phylum, the evolution, the diversity, oh, body plan. That's helpful. And then I think Sebastian, our other ocean science intern, also brought um, on board deep sea biology, a uh, natural history of organisms at, at the deep sea floor by. Um, Gage and Tyler, I believe. Okay. So feel free to check that out as well. And there's also a book by Cindy V. Vandover just on the ecology of deep sea hydrothermal yes. vents, yes. if you want to see yeah. that one. There's some good uh, ecology books. All those sponges are coming from so somewhere. Like, yeah. Yes, yeah. Sponge they're coming cemetery from here. somewhere, definitely. Sponge yeah, raining. wow. Sponges. Yeah, the contour lines are getting skinnier and skinnier. They might be swept there in the lee of that rock. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Yeah, I think we're seeing... Uh, yes, the newer book is uh, Brusca, Gilbert, and Moore, the invertebrates. Nebraska, Giribet, and more. Sorry for mispronouncing. No worries. Thanks for sharing that. I hope it's useful to whoever's listening out there that wants to learn more about the deep sea IDs and biology. Oh, come on. These look like uh, two different kinds of bamboo coral uh, colonies. Come down five, please. And Come down five. Okay. Turn on the light. Okay, you can push in there. Down five. So these have internodal branching. So in that case, uh, this would, this looks like uh, it's difficult to say. Either the keratoisis, uh, some species of cat in the genus keratoisis, because it's undergoing a lot of updates. Uh, Or can we economizes either one of the two? Looks more keratoisis, and I have no reason why I'm saying that it looks more keratoisis. Uh, the arrangement of the polyps somehow look more similar to a keratoisis. Thank you. You want to uh, pull out for a second? No, we'll look at the other one. There. Okay, push in on the little orange thing in the middle of it. Yes, I think it's one of those ring anemones that are sometimes seen associated with bamboo corals. And uh, this has, this also has an internodal branching, as far as I can make. Oh, ju no, it has a nodal branching. Probably has a nodal branching. Then probably a small Jasonisis. Yes. 
That's what it looks like. Thank you so much. Okay. And we're almost halfway through our watch on this Already? dive. I believe so. Yeah. Almost 2 a.m. And uh, just wanted to say hello to our new viewers from the United Arab Emirates, Australia, Belgium, Bulgaria, Brazil, China, Germany, Egypt, Finland, Guam, half a day, um, India, um, Poland, Serbia, Singapore, Turkey, uh, Italy, Japan, Norway, um, and of course, our continued viewers from Canada, UK, US, um, and the Netherlands. Thank you so much for joining us. We are on our last dive of the Ala Al Moana Kayuli expedition here in Papahanaumo Kuakea Marine National Monument. And we're currently about um, 2,210 meters deep, exploring um, 500 nautical miles northwest of Oahu at Gardiner Pinnacles. Uh, so, so far we've seen a couple of different corals, sea cucumber, um, and we're about to zoom in into something else. <laughs> so, Percentage? thanks for exploring uh, with us. I'm not sure. Definitely a sea star of some kind, but I'm not sure if it's a... No, yeah, it looks like a sea star more, like, yeah. with a regular It is a resinjid. Is it? Yeah, I was wondering if that was... Okay. Yeah. Bazinga. It's Bazinga. gonna jump. It's gonna jump. <laughs> Right, yeah, I would be s stunned if this one jumped off. <laughs> we think it's kind of float like this. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a like few times. If you cannot see Upashana, she's got her <laughs> arms raised up. <laughs> it has Is that uh, close enough there, or you want closer? Uh, I think I think That's we're good. good. Yeah. yeah. You're good. Yes. Right. Thank you. And we have a nice uh, bamboo whip at the back. <laughs> and again, Brasingids are filter feeding sea stars, right? Which I just think are so cool because a lot of sea stars and some of the ones that we see down here eat things by throwing up their stomach out of their mouth and digesting. <laughs> I mean, that's cool too, but um, digesting Is it and then <laughs> okay. slurping that back up. But well, just theory. digest the tissue and then the slurp it. Yeah, uh. it's just a different way of eating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. There's a small uh, sea anemone, the orange thing at the center. Uh, yeah, I think so. Probably. Unless it's a large cup coral thing. Yeah. yeah. I still don't remember the name Christ of that. Chrysogorgia. Again, bamboo corals, ferrate sponge, a small hemicorallium. And then a lot of dead ferrate sponges yeah, again in the yeah. lee of this rock. I wonder oh, what kind there's of... Oh, nice, there's a live one also. Oh, yeah. Spiriscopula at the top. The one that looks like a rib or the one that looks like a shepherd's hook? The rib. The rib. The rib. Sorry. Oh, what? <laughs> I was looking for the shepherd's hook. Yeah. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I Good didn't for see it. 2315, please. Roger. 2315. It's a shepherd's hook. Kurt uh, Staff. Oh. That, like, the. I know what you're talking about. Do they use it to, like, grab sheep? <laughs> oh, the shepherds of <laughs> now I know what you're <laughs> I know what you're from? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring this up. <laughs> no, I know which one you're talking about. The it's long like with the, hook. yeah, the hook with the long, the like question mark with the long. Tip. We can talk about it later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Took me a while to f remember what it is. So slightly starting to see uh, more density and downing mm -hmm. five. Definitely. I am from my, I did grow up in a very rural area, though I did not so have say. sheep. <laughs> 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 
because you did not have <laughs> the shepherds. No, right. I didn't. I didn't have the right tools. Right. There's still time. <laughs> There's still time. Forget yeah. ocean mapping. <laughs> and have sheep. Thank it's you. never too late. Yeah, absolutely. I think this watch is going faster because the other ones, we had so many back to back to back. And we had a bit of a break before That's this one. That, yeah, that makes we sense. got some rest. So it's exciting again. Not that they weren't exciting, but that they were very, yeah. It's okay, tell us how you feel. They weren't exciting. <laughs> <laughs> they were exciting, but draining, you know, a lot of concentration, especially the last one we did before this one. Oh yeah, yeah. We have a viewer question. Is the visibility always this amazing at this depth? So I think part of that is because, again, there's no sunlight that reaches here. So there's no like phytoplankton making the water cloudy. Um, there's not as necessarily as much nutrient input. I'm not sure. Um, did anyone want to comment on that? Upashana or Dan also, if you have a, um, if you ever had dives with less visibility to the left a bit. it depends also like because this is not such a sedimented area and the set even in sediment sedimented uh, area it's mostly settled sediment yeah. so it's not in the water column in the upper layers we see a lot of sediment because so how the Someone. ocean interacts with the rivers flowing in so they bring in the sediments there's more dissolved organic material there here we also have dissolved organic material, but like you said, we don't have so much of plankton, uh, <laughs> and all these contribute the towards the, the uh, zero zero. visibility and uh, yeah, the visibility that's there. Yes, uh, so yes, you're, like, you're absolutely right. Like all the same points. I'm just repeating what you said. Mm. Yeah, we're not traveling over a lot of sediment either. Right. And I think that usually becomes an issue with ROV sometimes if we're settling down to yeah. collect samples or take push cores. Right. Um, we can take a lot of that sediment with us and makes clouds. But usually, you know, Dan's really good at not doing that and getting rid of that if it does happen. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think um, sometimes I've seen a lot more marine snow mm -hmm. than okay, yeah. at this depth. But um, yeah, I think, yeah, it just depends. I'm sure, yeah, Dan's done a lot more dives than I have. Mm -hmm. but. Those shipwrecks at 5,000 meters plus mm -hmm. were covered with a fine sediment, but right, of yeah. course they were surrounded by bottom sediments, by deep ocean pelagic sediment. And here we're on the side of a, a kind of a rocky seamount. Yes. Thanks so much for chiming in on that, uh, Taylor Annan and Hans. a pretty large bamboo fan. I think yeah. maybe the biggest we've seen so far. Uh, Close to it. Yeah, on this um, on this on watch. this watch definitely. It would again I think it's it's one of those internodal bamboo corals, so either I think it's a cat Isis. The ship agrees. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Every ID you do that never gets old. <laughs> I'm going to recalibrate. All right. All right. Roger.
And we had a question about what's the most unusual or surprising thing you've seen on your watches. Um, and thanks for shouting out our Dumbo octopus and jellyfish videos recently. They were super cool. Um, I was wondering, Taylor Ann, if you're not too busy, and if you're busy, like, just let us know. Uh, if you'd like to share about um, when you were an intern and you saw the whale fall and the octopus garden, which is just like on the same time, what? right? You saw That's both crazy. Of those? Yeah, I know. I've been lucky to be on all ROV cruises my entire time working with OET, um, and that was my first year. So, yeah, wow. the story of the whale fall was that we were, you know, exploring. It was our last day, last dive, and we saw, you know, not much life, I think, at that time, and we were looking for a hard return on the sonar to investigate, you know, possible life. And I'm not sure who spotted it. I, I wasn't on watch at the time, but I was watching in the lounge, and uh, they went to explore that hard return, and it ended up being an entire whale fall. Um, yeah, it was beautiful. There were a lot of octopus um, or octopods there, uh, and lots of fish. Also, I think some giant isopods. Like everybody the giant was just isopods, feeding. Yeah. yeah. And bone then, worms. Yes, yeah. the bone eating worms. The bone eating worms. Ocelix. Uh, uh, zombie worms. Uh, yeah, I, I forget. It does start with an O. Oh, but because I don't it's got to do with uh, bone. Yeah. Um, Ocelix. Oh, yeah. Ocelix. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Um So yeah, yeah when you zoomed in. Yeah, twenty on the three hundred, I think. Um, Looks like we're the bones up with something here. of the whale looked really fuzzy, and at first we couldn't tell what it was, and then we realized they were Ocelix worms. Um, and we did get to collect a couple of pieces of the whale. Um, I think a piece of the vertebra. Um, I'm not sure what else, but I got to dissect the Ocidax worms out of the bone. Wow. And that was so cool. Um, and I'm probably sure so smelly. Yeah, it did smell pretty bad, <laughs> but it was totally worth it. <laughs> oh, I um, bad. And Where we actually returned a year later to see yeah. the whale fall again. And a lot of the bone had to been eaten by wow. the worms. And we, I think, collected again. And the worms were much bigger in size. Like they were engorged because they were just, you know, feasting. Um, wow. Pretty amazing experience to also be able to go back a year later. Um, no and yeah, wonder, that was a pleasant yeah. surprise, the last dive of the entire cruise, just to come across that. At least I think it was the last dive. That's how I remember it. Wow. No wonder you stayed with OET <laughs> and kept diving for another how many years has it been? Again? Yeah, I think four. So four yeah, years? 2019 wow. is when I started. Thanks so much for sharing that story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite memories. I actually got a tattoo of it. Um, a ta so I have a tattoo too. of Hercules uh, looking at the whale fall. And then there's also a bit of Davidson Seamount in the background. Ah, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Thanks and shout out to, to Nova for drawing that. The Nautilus got a yeah at it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you just say you're going to get a Hercules tattoo also, Jake? Ooh. Did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> you should. You, you pilot or you, you drove it. No or at least the date or the dive number. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very cool Anthemasters, and that would be our first observation of an Anthemasters uh, probably on this dive so far, that uh, given what Virginia has told me, uh, and at least definitely for our watch. And there's a toppled down bamboo coral with an internodal branching. So the Anthemaster has the stock and the pseudo does not have the yes. stock? Yeah. Yes, that is what we have the learned. The imposter. <laughs> <laughs> Poor pseudo Anthemaster. <laughs> but yeah, the octopus garden was also amazing. Got to see lots and lots of brooding mama octopods. Um, we even got to see some eggs hatching. Wow. And there was like babies. a little fight between a you shrimp and a, and a baby octopus hatching. <gasps> yeah, but the baby octopus escaped before it got eaten. But wait, <laughs> what, was, what was trying to eat it? I think it was a shrimp. Oh, I can't wow. remember. But Were they the same There's size? a highlight. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Oh my but, God. Um, but there's a highlight of it on, on sure. the YouTube page. <laughs> you need wow. to show me that. That is so <laughs> cute. Yeah, we were all cheering on the octopod baby. <laughs> <laughs> wow, life is so rough in the deep sea. It is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's so uh, few feeding opportunities. So uh -oh. when you come across them, it's, yeah, definitely something rare. Wow. Yeah, definitely check those highlights out. 
just the sheer number of octopods was yeah. like stunning to me. Um. Next tattoo, a squat lobster <laughs> eating the top. <laughs> Honestly, I probably would. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Um, and I think Dan was there for all of those dives too. Yeah. Yeah. I think I've been out with Dan every year I've come out, almost, if not every uh, expedition. Wow. Where's your tattoo, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any tattoos. Good. Don't do it. They hurt. He's too cool for tattoos. Uh, my generation tattoos were not cool. <laughs> <laughs> not not socially acceptable. Yeah. No. That's a nice uh, yeah. batty bat piece. That we are looking at. Does it have one of the... Looks like it has one of those polychaetes or uh, in it. Sometimes they're associated with... They're found on uh, black corals, I should say, associated. Yeah, I'm way off to the... Uh, I wandered off the reservation here. I was trying to get over to that rock. And not gonna make it. That's cool. Thank you so much. Okay. I think they ex well knock on wood. They expect to it to take longer to get up this ridge, but we're doing a pretty good job. Ooh, great job, Mia and front row team, getting us up the ridge. Well, it's mostly Dan and Jake, but yeah. They're doing the hard part. I just click button. <laughs> just click <laughs> button. <laughs> and pull on a lever. I look at all the screens to hopefully divert disaster. I'm sure if any of us swapped seats, none of us would know what to do. I don't know. Uh, except for Elsa. I think Elsa can. Oh, yeah. yeah Elsa can just jump into a seat. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, if you want a turn at data logging again, just <laughs> come over here whenever you want. Okay, yeah, sure. <laughs> and we had a follow-up question about um, why, the per why these worms would eat bones. Um, it seems like it would take a lot of energy to eat them compared to the amount of energy they could get. So I think that's a really good question. And that is a good question. I think it is kind of like these whale falls are uh, limit, they're like buffet for all these animals because there's limited food input into the deep ocean and everything gets utilized. So um, just looking up a little bit more about these worms, um, they do have a kind of unique feeding strategy. So uh, when they're Part of their body inside the whale bone forms a large egg sac and there's roots branching off from the egg sac that secrete acid into the bone to dissolve it. Yeah. And then symbiotic bacteria then digest the dissolved organic material yes. providing a food source for the worm. So it's yes. really not It's the not worm. the worms right. themselves but it's like it's the, so the yeah. symbiotic bacteria. It's like this chemosynthetic um, Worms, the chemosynthetic analytes that we have, right, and yeah. uh, the sulfur, the sulfur eating bacteria that resides in there. Yeah, that that helps them. So they're they're kind of working together. I guess the yeah. worm secretes acid and provides a home for bacteria, and the bacteria do the hard work of digesting yeah. a bone. And also, um. we have to understand that for like every source of uh, what is that on the rock? Uh -huh. Can push in Can there, we, yeah. Is that a really, really skinny? Skinny sea cucumber. Yeah. It's a baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the worm? <laughs> the, one of the worms? No, it's a sea cucumber. It's a elected sea cucumber. It has a lot of uh, sediment in its stomach. So. It looks cool. Those internal organs. Yeah. Right. Is it a baby? No. Some of them can be quite skinny. Runs. It's quite a large size in length. Okay, sorry. Let's let it work. You can push in there if you have it. 
Oh, it has like protrusions waving in the yeah. current. It's really cute. <laughs> it is kind of cute. Thank you so much. Thank okay, you. come away. I've been surprised at the vast shape and colors of all the sea cucumbers. Sea cucumber, yeah. yeah. They're quite colorful. They can be quite colorful. They remind me of nudibranchs. Mm -hmm. Are they related at all? No. No? Nudibranchs are mollusks, and these are echinoderms. Yeah, that still surprises me that these sea cucumbers are echinoderms related to starfish and things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have internal radial symmetry. Well, I know there are several species of Osidax. I know they're in the mesopelagic. Yeah. And yeah, and what happens is that uh, we have to understand that bones can be very high sources of nutrition. Oh, yeah. And also for every source of energy, every source of nutrition, there is some group of organism to utilize that. That is how the uh, energy cycles work in nature. So we need something to f decompose and disintegrate the bones as well. So for every source of organic material, there is some group of organism which are specialized to feed on them or receive nutrition from them. So, right, uh, yeah. And a lot of deep sea organisms have this partnership with microbes. Absolutely. So if, you, if you've heard of the Yeti crab before, it's like this crab with super fuzzy looking arms and it actually farms bacteria in those yeah, arms and eats exactly. that bacteria as well. And I believe tube worms also tube have worms bacteria. Do yeah. yeah. Tube worms do that, for the, especially the uh, hydrogen sulfide ones, which are found in the chemosynthetic. And another uh, interesting thing, just to add on to what you're saying, mm -hmm. like organic matter, so decaying bits of what used to be living animals or their poop or whatever <laughs> like that. Um, they usually have something that is dedicated to eating that. So um, the interesting thing is like my work on mangroves, right? Where mangroves are native, like as soon as a leaf hits the water, yes. like fungi start yes. to yeah. decompose it. But mangroves are actually invasive in Hawaii and they did oh. a study um, and found that, like looking at the food web, that just things have not evolved to use to that organic the, matter from mangroves, and that's why it produces all this organic matter, and nothing eats it, and then it just clouds up the water, and um, I believe like ruins fish pond exactly. habitats. And so. also the nutrients that are released from the decaying plant matter of the microbes, again supports. Uh, various kinds of plankton communities in those waters because that was part of my master's uh, <laughs> thesis that how the plankton communities vary between uh, areas which have uh, mangroves and which had mangroves but are currently depleted of mangrove vegetation and we could clearly see that there were different assemblages of phytoplankton and they can kind of be used as bioindicators of water qualities Mm -hmm. So there's a, it's not just a single step, it's a multi-step, it's a food web, it's mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. So uh, everything contributes to that and gets recycled mm -hmm. and put back in the system. So do you, do you miss plankton research? <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, no. Try the next one at uh, 280. Step to the left there a bit. Yeah, so the uh, yeah, hydrothermal best. vent uh, analysts that we were talking uh, about, the rift, yeah, the rift type bacteria, they also have the bacteria in their uh, gut that actually utilizes. Uh, I'll stop for.
It's a valid of arms. I think we're really right there. I think. I can't tell where it's pinging. We should be. Closer to right I in front of the It's too weird to, to pronounce. I was pre pronouncing it wrong. Oh, maybe that's right. It's that could yeah. be right. See, I like to on this guy. Oh. But they've taken it from this guy. Where is it? Ramu de Gorgia. I don't know. Am I pulling you there? Or what's going on? Why is your heading? I think with the bounce, it's just. Oh, that's what's happening. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You good? You good? We're oh, good. We had another question asking, is there much known about the reproductive strategies of these deep sea corals? Um, I know that's kind of like a huge question. Is there kind of a summary of maybe the different strategies, like some of them re release eggs and some of them brood, right? Yeah, Any other so like that? Uh, these are colonial and clonal organisms. Uh, they are all... So if, you're, if I'm talking mostly about octocorals, specifically they are capable of asexual reproduction. And at the same time, we have uh, some octocorals which release sperms and eggs in the water column. And then again, we have the brooders. Uh, so depending on the group of octocoral, the strategies differ. And uh, for example, I think most of the sea pens so far uh, have been brooders, then we have the white spawn, some of the plexoids are white spawners. So it depends from group to group at different levels, but these are the overall basic strategies that follow. Very cool. Thanks for that overview. Mm -hmm. I think I was writing down one day which groups mostly follow what, somewhere in my notebook. And we have another question. Do you see much plastics on the seafloor? Or are your cruises mostly away from where you'd expect to find plastics? So, so far on our expedition here in Papa Hanamo Kuakea Marine National Monument, we've been lucky to not see that many plastics, but we did see some what look like fishing nets or fishing line, um, kind of tangled in some corals in some of our previous dives. Yeah, those were sad sights to see, um, for sure. But I think they that those lines were made of some type of plastic derivative, um, and they were fraying, which, you know, plastic Tricky. will never fully yeah. degrade because it's a man-made material, but it will break up into smaller and smaller pieces called right. microplastics. Um, yeah. yeah. And actually, if you'd like to share more about your microplastics work, because that's in your research, if it's a good time, yeah, sure. if it's not a good time, we yeah. can come back to it later. Uh, yeah, so in 2020, I actually collected some samples on the Nautilus for my master's thesis um, because my original project kind of got canceled due to COVID. Um, and yeah, they were really great about um, allowing me to collect some samples. So Completely most of my samples... Completely plugged up our system, by the way. <laughs> me? <laughs> With the sea pens? <laughs> With the uh, kelp, I remember that. Oh, the kelp, that yeah. Yeah, I collected some <laughs> drift kelp. 
because um, my original thesis project was going to be looking at microplastic pollution in kelp forests. Oh, oh wow. okay. Specifically in kelp And specifically, forest. yeah, okay, because they're, you know, large masses of this sticky kind of kelp that has a mucus on its um, exterior and, you know, flow is attenuated by the mm -hmm. kelp. Water moves slower in kelp forests, so I was thinking bit. microplastics could potentially accumulate there. Um, but so, yeah, I tried to incorporate a little bit of that into this research because we were seeing drip kelp and we also see, saw some sea urchins on the kelp, um, which I was able to get uh, a sample. There was like 10 sea urchins feeding on a piece of drift kelp. Um, so I got, I think, a sediment core in that area, as well as an urchin, a couple urchins, um, and uh, the kelp itself to, to see if microplastics were kind of in the, the play, at play there. Um, but most of my samples were water samples from the surface down to, I think, about 3,800 meters wow. um, to filter those to see if microplastics were pre present. And almost in every sample, I found microplastics. Um, some Even of that could be, deep? yeah, wow. yeah. Some of that could be due to um, contamination, but I did have lab blanks and um, took other factors in, into consideration to account for contamination. Um, but yeah. Uh, so overall, I saw yes. microplastics in yeah nearly every water sample, um, and I also collected some organisms with different feeding mechanisms to see if their mechanisms would you know allow them to be ingesting microplastics. Right, so like filter feeders and yeah uh, yeah. So I got a couple of sea pens um, to see if they could be grabbing microplastics from the water column, and mm. then some urchins to see if like they were you know deposit feeders. Right. Some, if they were feeding on microplastics in the sediment. Um, so far, I have seen some of them. Um, on the top of my head, I can't remember my results. <laughs> um, but I'm also in the stage of finalizing my, my results and making sure they're actually significant. Um, but the most significant detail I, I can remember from my results thus far is that um, there wasn't a difference in concentration of microplastics across depths, Go for another but, 20. but there was a difference in the different types uh, and, and abundances uh, of the different types. Sure. Um, so I'm still trying to figure that out. I guess that makes sense, like different sinking like properties, yes. the shape or the buoyancy of the yeah. material. Yeah, and I'm mostly been seeing polyesters or rayon, which is technically not a plastic, but it's a some type of material that's treated with chemicals that uh, I can't remember on the top of my head how it's treated, but um, pretty much just as bad as plastic. Um, and is, I think, categorized as a microplastic. Yeah, and microplastics in general, their definition is uh, pieces less than five millimeters, is exactly. that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And how do you, um, do you like count them visually? Do you, is there like a chemical way that you determine how much microplastic is in the water? Yeah, so I filtered them onto these really f small, poor size filters, um, and then um, took all of them back uh, to my lab and looked at them under a microscope. Bring your head to the right, just a bit for me, Jacob. Square up with the sonar there for me. Um, and yeah, so I visually counted the different colors um, and shapes and types I was seeing. But then I used this machine called a micro FTIR, um, which is the same machine they use in crime labs to match fibers. Um, so yeah, I used a machine like that that had a library of known plastics. Oh, uh, maybe 300. Um, to match the plastics against, to see what percentage of a match they had to unfouled regular factory plastics. So um, I definitely, I think my highest percent match was like 68% or 70%, something like that. Um, so yeah, I took representatives from each of my samples and looked at them under this FTIR machine, which took a very long time. <laughs> wow, Perfect. yeah. Thanks. But yeah, um, Counting microplastics tiny research. Yeah, yeah, it's. It, I don't think it's my passion, but it was definitely a very interesting project for my masters. Um, and yeah, I'm trying to wrap that up and move on and see what I want to do next. Uh, Archaeology has really gotten my heart the last few months wow. in the, with the combination of science. So we'll see, plug it and move it. Trying to figure that out. Uh, All right. Well, thanks for sharing your yeah. research journey. Yeah. Really interesting. Yeah, thank you, OET, for helping me uh, 
get to the end of my master's. <laughs> Uh, and we have some shout outs. Uh, keep up the great work, everyone, um, from an art class in Maine. You are all super inspiring, so thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, and feel free to ask your questions. I did a little Instagram takeover today and did a little Chanacops drawing tutorial. The Chanacops is a type of deep sea fish. If you want to um, try that out and send us your Chanacops pictures, I'd love to see them. And, uh, and a brittle star uh, drawing tutorial. So uh, feel free to take, take that tutorial and um, draw whatever deep sea critters you would like. Um, and shout out to my friend in Guam. Half a day, Farin. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> hey, Farin. <laughs> oh, that's Elsa. Oh my gosh, you met her at APCRS. The, yes. <laughs> um, Farin does a lot of great work in Guam, removing marine debris and doing education. He's an amazing science communicator. So, if you want to learn more about his work, uh, his handle is at the Guam guy. So check that out. <laughs> yeah, that's lovely. Yeah, and uh, I think we passed over a small hemi coralium from a distance, at least that's what I'm going to go by, and uh, uh, various bamboo corals, some of some webs and some fans. So this is particularly this one rock, which suddenly had a lot of diversity on it. Relatively speaking. Relatively speaking. Yeah. You know, we've been having a debate at home about washing rice. And I don't wash my rice. I like sticky rice. What? I don't either. Did I just hear <laughs> that? But I read an article saying, well, it's important to wash rice, yeah. but not for the reasons you think. Ah. Because you need to take out the microplastics. Exactly. The microplastics, oh, the chemicals, wow. and all the things that come with it. Yeah. From the packaging and... I know. Sorry, mom. I'm not. I, I don't wash my rice. <laughs> Did you I'll start washing it. Now. My mom can know that sometimes I don't wash rice. Ooh. I've never washed my <laughs> rice. Mostly, I do. I don't do the two or three step that right. she no, does. No, no. At least I do it once. Yeah, yeah. This I don't wash criminal. it until the water runs clean. I just yeah, wash it like yeah. a couple sometimes of Sometimes I do that when I have time. But yeah, I think that's a. Uh, it's difficult to ID from a distance, probably a chrysogorgid. And uh, quite a big uh, bamboo coral fan, a keratoisis, I would say, from a distance. But try and change the subject that you don't wash your rice. <laughs> <laughs> it's just in case if anybody's listening, they don't need to hear that. <laughs> That's criminal in my household. Mm. Oh. But isn't the kind of rice for sticky rice a different kind? Yes. Completely? It's not like all rice is. You want all that glutinous stickiness. Yeah. Sweet rice or, sti or sticky rice. That is probably a rem, yeah. That's what it seems from a distance. Um, let's try two zero to the west there, please. If you thought it was, it was. I missed it. There was there's a sea cucumber, bamboo corals, mm -hmm. webs, cratoises. Definitely, Probably finally seeing it. more density. Also, yeah. Relatively speaking. Yeah, and compared to the be beginning. That would the <laughs> uh, sea cucumber. Quite a wall. <laughs> 